This video is going to be examples part four of section 4.1. So we've got, it says use A of T, which is the acceleration equal to negative 32 feet per second squared as the acceleration due to gravity. Neglect air resistance. We don't want to make things more complicated. We're just pretending that air resistance doesn't exist. Just to make the problem simple. It says with what velocity must an object be thrown upward from ground level to reach the top of a national monument 560 feet tall. It says round to three decimal places. So they want to know the velocity. Now remember, remember our, um, our calculus information there. You start off with the position function and then when you take the derivative of that position function, you end up with the velocity function. And if you take the derivative again, you end up with the derivative of the velocity, which happens to be the acceleration. So I want to know, I'm given this, and I want to know what the velocity is, okay? Which means that I need to find the antiderivative, okay? So we want to do the integral of a of t dt, which means I also want to do the integral of negative 32 dt. Now here, this is going to be v of t, because v prime is a of t. So if I find the integral, I'm going to get, um, you could think of it like this. a of t is v prime, right? And then the integral of a derivative is just the original function. And remember, you don't have to put the plus C here because it's going to get moved over to that side. Here, I would have negative 32T plus C. So it says, with what velocity, so we need to know the velocity function, um, will an object be thrown from ground level to reach the top of a national monument 560 feet tall? So it's saying that they're giving me this information. They're giving me an initial condition. However, they're saying that it needs to be thrown up and it needs to reach this height. Well, remember, this height has to do with the position, okay? So the information that they're giving me has to do with the position. So they're saying that um, if I'm just now throwing it up the object, then the time has not happened yet, okay? Um, I, the time is zero. I'm now gonna just grab it and throw it up. So the time that has elapsed is zero. Um, with what velocity should be thrown upward to reach the National Monument at 560 feet, okay? But notice I need S of T in order to use this information. So we are going to have to find the integral of the velocity to figure that out. So remember that velocity is s prime, and the integral of a derivative is the original function. And here you get negative 32 as a multiplier, t squared over 2. This is just a constant, so you get that constant times c but then you get another constant added to it. <coughs> and to show that these two constants may be different from one another, I put a subscript one here and I put a subscript two there. This one comes from that constant from the previous integration step, and this new constant is from the second integration step. So we've got this problem here. Actually, the two will reduce with that 32. And so then we get um, okay. Now, just looking at this, I realize that um, this section here talks about um, we're not quite there yet. Okay, so let's draw a picture here. When you have this here, your position is obviously going to be a quadratic equation. 
which means it's going to look something like this. And since you are throwing it from ground level, that means that the object is starting at ground level, okay? Which means when no time has passed, the height is actually not 560 feet, it is zero, okay? What you wanna find out is when it reaches the 560 feet as high as the National Monument. So your object here is to find this time there, okay? Um, but to do that, we first have to come up with some information here, okay? So we do have this equation here, and um, this here, you can call it your initial velocity, but this here is going to be the amount of velocity that you put onto this object to make it take off. So what I wanna find is I wanna find the initial velocity. With what velocity must an object be thrown upward? So this right here is telling me what is that velocity. Um, that's the initial velocity. And we talked about before, when you have an initial condition, it gives you the C value here. So instead of C, I'm going to change the variable and I'm gonna put V zero, which is the notation for initial velocity, the velocity at time zero. So which means here, I'm gonna change it to V zero, but it's still a constant, I don't know what it is. Um, so when I integrate that constant, I still get that constant times T, but then now I don't need a subscript there, okay? Um, so again, this constant is now being called the initial velocity, and so we don't need a subscript there. But I do need to use this information here about at the fact that I'm at ground level when I start, the object is going to start at a height of zero, okay? So if I plug in zero for t, and I plug in zero for the y value, s, I end up with this is zero, this is zero, I end up with that c is just equal to zero, which means the initial condition for my position function will give me this equation here. Plus zero, zero for the C, but I don't need to necessarily write that, okay? Now what I want to find, remember this is for the position, okay? This frac function represents S of T. I just don't know what the values are because I don't have all the information for um, this function here. However, I do know that when it reaches this height, this maximum height, okay, it just wants me to know how, how hard do I have to throw this so that it gets to that height exactly, okay? Um, that's going to be my peak, which is my vertex of a parabola. And we know that for a vertex of a parabola, we can find that vertex. Um, we know that it's at negative B over to A comma, um, not F, but s of negative b over 2a. But I do know this value. I know the y value. I know the y value is 560. What I don't know is the actual t value that goes here, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute um, this in here. So if we look at this function here, um, this would be 500. Or I'm sorry, 560. And we don't know what t value to use. But I can set this equation equal to zero. Minus 560. And I can find the vertex of this. Okay. So how do you do that? t will equal um, negative b over 2a. And negative b is this, so negative v0 over 2 times negative 16. And that is um, negative and negative will cancel. So we get v, um, initial value of v over 32, okay? So this is where that maximum is occurring, okay? So now I know that the point where it's occurring is this t value 
and it'll reach that height, okay? But I still don't know what V naught is, okay? There's still an unknown there. So I have to go back to this original equation and plug this V, this T value in here. Once I do that, I will have all V naught, which means my whole equation will just have, the only variable will be V um, sub zero. And that means, if that's the case, then I should be able to solve for V sub zero. So let me grab some paper here because I'm running out of room. So let's go in and plug this into there. So the Y value is 560. The T value where that occurs is V naught over 32 squared plus V naught times V naught over 32 for T. So let's simplify this. We end up with 560 equal to negative 16 V naught squared over 32 squared, which is 1024, plus this times this will give me V naught squared over 32. Let's see, 16 over 1024, reduce that. This will become negative 1 over 64 V naught squared. This, if I want to get a common denominator, could be 2 V naught squared over 64, which gives me positive 1 over 64 V naught squared. And if I'm trying to solve for V naught, then what to do is I want to multiply both sides by 64. So I end up with this huge number equal to V naught squared and if I want to solve for V naught I have to take the square root. So then the square root of that number is going to be approximately plus or minus 189 point and it said for me to round to three decimal places so one two three that's going to make that a five so three one five now it did say that I was throwing it in an upward um, velocity so because I'm throwing it in an upward velocity I'm only going to take the positive version of this answer for our particular answer we're going to get 189, positive 189.315. So this was quite a long problem, um, and it did require you to tear everything about the um, physics information apart. Okay, But hopefully this example will help you to do the example that's a little similar to it in the um, WebAssign homework.